what is going on boys and girls of youtube we're back at it with another top five we are doing adcs today uh we've done jungles and mids already if you haven't watched those videos go watch them they're good and to me they're fairly accurate i could see some arguments but eh, not so you know not crazy arguments with adcs today i think this is pretty straightforward and a lot of people missed the last patch uh, about one of the buff gods so we'll talk about that and that's why he is where he is but let's just get into it i don't want to waste y'all's time It's gonna be pretty basic and there's gonna be you know i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna reason with you guys i'm gonna explain what's going on here so there's a lot of good adcs just in general because adcs hit really hard they kill tanks they're very good in the late game i think mages are still better slightly in the late game but adcs still pump in reality most adcs can be played i will say i think scotty is the worst adc in the game i don't think it's close and then artemis kind all right artemis is kind of close but I think Artemis gets more wins because of the CC immune alt and the ability to just W key, where Scotty kind of just dies a lot. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Number five on our list is Cupid. And why is it Cupid? What's going on with Cupid? Where did he come from? Cupid's been playing really well and kind of just going under the radar. And especially now that we're shifting from this crit meta to an AA pen meta, which is basically just the standard hunter build. It's lifesteal, XE, kins, um, you know, another pen item, another attack speed item, whatever goes oboe in the builds usually it's really not too crazy it, it's standard it's been that that build has been around since for the last 10 years cupid excels with the build he has built in uh attack speed which a lot of people don't even realize his um three is attack speed is built into his kit it's not when you three it's passive understand that <laughs> but that's not what makes him so much better right now it's his ability to counter a lot of these hunters that don't have the CC immunity that's necessary to not eat the ult. And really a lot of hunters in general just have dashes and movement that you can counter. So like just for, a, in general, is an Ami. No CC immune ult. So she has the beads every time you Cupid ult her. Your Cupid ult is on a shorter cooldown than beads. So you should be able to kill her every second ult. And if you get to a point where you have any cooldown or if someone else burns the beads, then you get off of that timer and you're killing even more often. But that's not just Izanami. There's Ho Yi in that list. There's Neath in that list. Um, Scotty doesn't really. Scotty's a little bit different because she has her three to move out of it. But if you do it right, she's not going to get out of it. There's a lot of just counterplay in general that's that's gonna gonna help you. Uh, even Chiron, you technically counter because Chiron's all he's gonna eat the full alt to the dome. Ool, you're a hard counter to Ool. It's a matchup you don't win. Shivalanke can be a, a good matchup for Cupid. There's a lot of Cupid matchups that go well. And if you're drafting Cupid later into a draft, you can pick it to counter pick all day. It just in general on his own with minus the counter pick aspect, he's a good pick. It's a solid pick every game. You're going to excel with him. And honestly, in team fights, he's kind of nuts. It's very hard to play around him. Most gods being played right now have leaps or dashes, and you're going to counter all those in every team fight. So that's why Cupid is, for me, Number five, I don't think I'm going to change that anytime soon. I think most hunters can be played, but Cupid kind of just excels at a, in a different way than everyone else right now. And you have to recognize it. And you really have to recognize his ability to kill tanks. He's one of the only hunters that while auto attacking can basically just throw out a stun. <laughs> like you, a pretty, if, I just want to double check because I wanted to say the one slows as well, right? Yeah, 20%. So you get to slow them, which equals free autos. They st get stunned, more free autos. And in the late game, they're dead at that point. Front tanks are dead, assassins, everyone's dead. Everyone's gonna die. Most hunters don't have the ability to just in the mix of autoing do that, to have that happening. It just doesn't work out that way. So Cupid is excelling. Cupid's number five on my list. Number four on the list is this char. This charge moved down. Why is this char moved down? Because crit has kind of fallen off. It's not dead by any means. Crit is not dead. You can still build crit. It is definitely viable. It's gonna be very annoying killing a spectral armor target. I will say yesterday I was running ability Hachi, which means I had way more power than a normal auto attack build, but I went crit with the ability build and I was autoing this Guan Yu for 600 who had full defense and a spectral armor. So you can still do damage around it because at some point once you have enough pen and crit, that minus 40% damage is a lot, but it's not, you know, you're hitting really, really hard at that stage in the game. Um, so you can still run crit. I think if you're playing Ishtar, you have to go crit, and that's why I'm moving her down. I don't think her kit works anywhere near as well with a basic auto attack build. I think it still works. I just think it's not quite the same. I don't think it has the exact same impact. If you're still going against a crit hunter, if someone else is still building crit, you're probably going to lose out in those trades. 
And in a ranked game, you want to win all your trades. You want to be able to win every one you take. So I'm putting Ishtar down a little bit just because of the reduced damage and the reduced viability of crit. That's it. She's still very good. Cripple stun all, which is ridiculous. Like these hunters that have massive ults. Also, I'm not sure of the exact numbers of every other hunter, but in the early game, her rank two ultimate, if you hit somebody right on top of you, so like assassin diving you or a warrior diving you, that ult's doing six, 700 damage. That's crazy for early rank one, rank two ults. Like that is a lot, a lot of damage that people just kind of forget about. She's got good mobility. She can buy time with her three. She got the mini mez for setups and autos. And then her one is just OP. Her one is one of the best regular abilities in Smite. It's probably a top 10 ability in the game outside of ults. And I think we need to recognize that. And I don't think she's going to fall off and become poo poo anytime soon. So don't, don't think she's dead. She's just falling down a little bit. Number three on our list is CERN. CERN has been here. He goes up and down and up and down in this like top five, six, seven slots in the ADC role for the past little bit. They've nerfed his one a couple times. It doesn't matter. Now that we're out of a crit build, he's even better than he was before. He's back to just dumpstering. Now we're already on the one here. This is what makes him so good. If you're playing him, you're going Cowl, which is a lifesteal starter. You're going Devo Gloves, which is a lifesteal item. And then you have built-in lifesteal potential in your kit. <clears throat> that lifesteal will allow you to solo fire, gold, any objective you want. In any trades 1v1, you'll be out lifestealing your enemy opponent. So you can win every trade. It allows you to face tank people. When assassins are war and warriors are diving you, you have the ability to swap to more protection shred more for a tank, more raw damage for a jungler. If a jungler's on top of you, you'll be able to out sustain on top of your passive with the extra damage at melee. You're doing 30% more damage in melee range. That's ridiculous for people that are diving you. They don't take into account. It hits hard. His one really just puts him over the top because it's not a stim. It's not raw attack speed like most people want. So people don't know how to play around it. They're not used to... Like when you hear a Rama uses two, you know he's about to do a lot of damage for four or five seconds. That's it. This God's one is consistent. Now, a good CERN is going to get max value out of the one. They're going to apply uh, protections and then they're going to swap over to extra damage or they're going to swap over to healing and then they're going to go back to, protect to protection. So you're going to see them cycling. If the person's not cycling, they're still going to hit hard, but they're not going to be as crazy. If a person is cycling correctly, you're not going to win very many 1v1s versus CERN. On top of that, he really came back in the meta when they gave him his cripple on his two, the center of his two cripples. Like I said with Cupid, that cripple hold is crazy value right now because so many gods have dashes and movement and, and are just using those to get into fights, using those to try to survive. This root cripple pretty much allows you to instantly get the leg up on anybody who wants to use a dash to get in or has to run away from you with a dash. It also hits fairly hard and then ticks for a little bit of damage. So on top of your autos hitting ridiculously hard, having a cripple in a kit is always insane value. Every cripple in smite ends up being considered OP at some point. It's just how it works. On top of that, in the early mid game, his dash just hits so hard. It's such a hard hitting dash. It's 80% scaling. It hits for 290. People use the CERN dash to run away or to chase people. But if you're in the mix of a 1v1 and you dash cancel the dash as soon as you hit him. So you can cancel your three if you didn't know that by right clicking. Uh, or I think on controller it's like B or something. Um, dash cancel it right on top of them. So you're in melee range after you hit them with that dash. And it's just burst. It's just, you know, it's a three damage and an auto instantly. They're not ready for it. Because it's an auto attack cancel. You can auto three cancel auto. It's so much damage. People won't react to it. They won't be expecting it. It's one of those things where you play the God more. You'll get more comfortable doing it. And in the lower and mid game of smite, like it's just not something people recognize. They don't know it's coming. They don't expect it. They don't even know it. it's in the game. They don't know how to react to it. So this God is just pumping on top of that massive CC alt in the middle of a team fight. It's always going to have value. It's a two-second polymorph. Most people don't like beading this, especially oops, especially your tanks. They do not want to have to use an active on this. So it's great for peel. I'm not really, really good kid overall. Uh, shreds tanks, from and that's what most of you are going to be looking for in your hunters weekend. in the late game. So it's going to be something you're going to want to go for. Number two on our list. I don't think this should surprise you at all. It's Martikaris. And for a long time, I've been saying you can play Martikaris, AA, or Ability. But over the course of a couple weeks seeing it play the different iterations ability base is way better max build late game his one two combo will hit for somewhere around 60 to 70 percent with the auto so you're gonna one two and there's gonna be an auto mix in there um just that one auto and the one two combo 
will 70% most mages and hunters. And then another auto will usually kill them. Uh, if you're going a Hydra's build, it will definitely kill them. Most people are going a Transcendence in so going Blue Stone, Transcendence, and then Soul Eater to max out lifesteal and just make your ability lifesteal crazy. His ability to trade is ridiculous. His three is very underrated by average players. And even the SPL casters, I heard them once. They're like, what are you supposed to do with the three? It doesn't do anything. It's so good. Gives them 40% movement speed. I, see, I think they nerfed it at 30. They nerfed it at 35%. So 35% movement speed. Hides your teammates. It gives you a layer of, um, I won't say, you know, protection. It's not quite protection, but it gives you that surprise factor around objectives. People don't, you don't want to just throw ability into there. Because you throw an ability into there and the person's not in there and they're in a different one. And they start hitting you, your ability down. That's an instant advantage for you. And then the biggest thing on this god, aside from the fact that he can pretty much insta-burst you in the late game, he's good in the early mid. The burst is still there. It's just not quite 70%. Biggest thing in his whole kit is his ult. It's an instant ult. There's no delay. Uh, the second you ult, you stop taking damage and you're up in there. His ultimate is probably the cleanest, quickest, most fluid air ult there is in the game. It does a ridiculous amount of damage with ability build. Uh, it hits 12 times for 95 plus 20% scaling. So say you're around the 400, actually late, late game, you're probably around the 500 uh, power mark. So you're talking 100 extra damage on your abilities. So this is hitting for almost 200 a burst. It's hitting 12 times. That's over 2,000 damage with just the ultimate. <laughs> that's crazy damage, man. That's It's one of the higher damaging abilities in the game. And the 12 bursts are easy to hit. On top of that, it's um, three seconds of you flying in the air. So safety allows for your team to rotate. You're pumping out damage. You're turning the fight with it. You're not, you know, you're avoiding whatever damage you want with it. That part of his kit is what makes it all just come together and be super, super strong. If you didn't know, his passive is also built-in lifesteal uh, and attack speed. Built-in lifesteal. We talked about this with CERN. His one, when you're using that lifesteal, you're never going to lose a trade. You're able to solo a lot of objectives. He has built-in lifesteal, and then he's still going Soul Eater. So his ability lifesteal is crazy high. There's only a couple of assassins that are even close to matching his ability lifesteal, which is kind of unheard of in a hunter. And... Something you should definitely be playing. This is one of those hunters you, if it gets through, you should pick it. It should not lose. Um, you should win every lane. You're safe clearing. If anyone's ganking you, you can literally sit under your tower and clear from the tower. It's not going to go bad at any point. It's just not. <laughs> Martikers is ridiculous. Just get used to positioning and using his three for that movement speed and you'll be all right. So, Marty was number two on our list. Number one on our list is, you know, why is this happening? Where does this come from? It's Hacha Man. I got asked this a million times yesterday. I took Hachi into the jungle, ability build, and did 60,000 damage with a full ability build. He's overtuned right now, and I wouldn't be surprised if after he sits at the top of the hunter list for a while, he gets nerfed. What happened was, everyone's asking me, why is Hachi OP now? Uh, they randomly added attack speed to his passive. At level 20, he can get 20% attack speed. It's 2% plus 0.1 per level. Uh, it stacks five times. So you're, you're getting, you're just, you're just getting a ton of attack speed for no reason. I don't know why they wanted to do this, but even in the early game, it's ridiculous. I was running an ability build in the jungle with protector of the jungle. So you got that attack speed as my only attack speed item. Actually, I think I had crusher too, but no, you know, no XE, no kins, none of that stuff. I was basically cap attack speed. If I was near a Shogun's, I was cap attack speed and that's, with standard ability items i'm hitting cap attack speed they also buff the damage on his one to be relevant um this out trades the ishtar one with the range extra damage quick attack speed he pretty much gains that he's four of them it's 60 damage at max rank plus 120 percent of your basic damage with the ability build i was talking about now he's not an ability hunter i need to, to he's an auto attack hunter you're gonna build him like an auto attack hunter and he's gonna win i played him in adc on the pts he wins every trade. He destroys tanks. Nobody can out-trade him. It's ridiculous. But with an ability build, I have to mention this, you can crit for almost 2,000 damage with just the one and a Hydra's and a crit. You can just you just one-shot somebody pretty much with a, a one. That's insane range. This gives you extra range. 80 rate units on your one. Hits this <laughs> for this much damage. It's increasing your basic damage. If you didn't know, Hunter's already hit... Uh, at higher levels, their passive, the Hunter passive, is more basic attacks. Their basic attacks hit for 110%, I think, at max level. So, you have that 110%. 
this 120 percent this extra 60 damage it's ridiculous and then they also buff the two to just be better clearing it gives a little bit more damage he's got a safety alt so he can't be ganked if you don't want to be ganked his three is kind of similar to cern's three where you can use it hyper aggressive if you're you're comfortable with your aggressive play so you know when you want to disengage versus when you want to fight this ability will turn the 1v1 for you every time it's like cern's three where it's instant kind of crazy damage and unexpected this is the same thing the three hits more than once so it says damage per hit you dash through somebody and then you swing around um and if you hit the dash and the swing you stun them so you're getting one second stun which is an extra two to three autos that you're gonna win be ahead or up on that person with if you hit this on top of that, you're hitting for 160 plus 40% power twice. So 320 plus 80% scaling. That's a lot of burst damage after more than likely hitting your two on them and then popping your one and getting that extra basic damage. Your just raw damage output is very, very high. The ult hits hard, 100% scaling almost, 445 base. Great team fight ultimate. It's like an Ishtar style god mixed with a little bit of CERN. Um, but he was around first, so really Ishtar's a little bit of Hachi and Cern's a little bit of like you get what I'm saying. He's got a kit that kind of does a little bit of everything. And right now, he's definitely the number one hunter in the game. It's not even a question in my mind. He's insanely safe. His great laning phase, his team fight's insane, his just raw, pure auto attack damage output is matching and beating everybody. And he excels with an auto attack pen build. He doesn't need crits to be viable and really useful and over the top like Ishtar. He just works with a basic kit. It's He's one of the most basic gods in the game while not being basic. <laughs> like his kit is not hard to understand, but it's not always used perfectly. So practice him, get used to playing him, get used to him being number one. And that's going to be your top 500. Super straightforward in my mind. Like I said, there's a bunch of good hunters and there's other hunters. Like if you look at the ranked leaderboards or sorry, the ranked win rates, I think Artemis is up there. Artemis is up there from W King in the ranking. So your rank games that are just very disorganized and a lot of running at people, you can play a guy like Artemis and just kind of suck and press four and hold left click and you'll kill people. Where if you're good, so you know, a bad player playing Artemis might be a little bit better than a bad player playing Hachi. But an average player or a good player playing Hachi will be a million times better than a good player, an average player playing Artemis. That's why those win rates are kind of hard to look at. These are the gods you definitely should be playing. Hachi, I won't be surprised if he just tears, <coughs> tears up the SPL and they kind of start popping off or he's just banned every game. I don't know. He might just be banned because I don't know how they're going to win trades and, and play around him. He's going to be very annoying. Uh, hopefully you guys like this video. Hit the like button if you did. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the video later tomorrow, the next day, the next day, and the next day.